morning, church. How's everyone doing this morning? It's going to be a great day in the house of God. Why don't you stand with us as we enter in? We're going to lift our hearts, lift our hands to the heavens. We're going to give Him all the glory. Come on. Yes, God. We are your church.
on, church. He's awesome. Yeah.
Just as I am, empty handed but alive in your hands. Now, just stay. Now, just stay. Forever I am changed by you. of your majesty 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 your grace your grace has found me just as I am empty handed back Light in your hands, majesty, majesty, forever, forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty.
It's of the highest priority when we come together as believers and we worship our Lord. So welcome to church. As we do this this morning, I'd like to say a really big welcome. And and this is church. And we're going to enter into a time of prayer now. And the good thing about coming into church, I'm worshiping for about 20 minutes. If you come late, why don't you come early? Do you know why? It takes about 20 minutes for you to leave all the thoughts of the morning behind all the worries of your week behind, to engage your heart. You need all of the worship to get your eyes off yourself and onto the Lord so that now when we go to pray and we're thankful, we're like, oh, everything's in perspective now. We can see it clearly. So we've got so much to be thankful for, church. Yeah, let's give them a hand. We've got so much to be thankful for. So on the screens in a minute, you're going to see what we're thankful for. But just have a sad announcement. A member of our church... Um, passed away 25 years. Brian was um, a member of our church and he um, passed away on the weekend. And it's um, a great tragedy, but we know that he's in heaven. He's, He's in heaven, but it doesn't stop the grief. So I'd really like to lift up their family as we pray. And, um, if you knew them and their family, their funeral is on Tuesday at 1.30. Um, is it here in the in the prayer chapel, in that beautiful prayer chapel. So can um, keep their family in our hearts this week and particularly on Tuesday. And um, we're thankful for a great life lived out for Jesus, hey? Thankful for family in church that we can come and gather around them. So I'd just like you right now as we go to pray and we're thankful for these things, salvations, our community dinner. Um, Josie, you big legend, she runs our C3 Care Centre in Narrabeen. We had salvations out to the community. Cancer, confined and treated, and our manly service launch. More salvations. It's all about reaching the community and seeing people put in heaven, storming heaven with people from our community. So we have so much to be thankful for, and I understand right now that there is a lot of deep need in our church as well. So as we come and pray now, pray for your brother and sister right here. Pray for your family. Pray for your workplace. Pray for healing. So let's do it, church. Let's all unite together. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are a good God, that you are all-powerful, that your word is true and does not lie. God, that you watch over your word to see it is performed. So as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, as we pray for healings, I thank you, Lord, that you are the God that heals. As we pray for restorations, I thank you, Lord, that you are the God that forgives. God, I thank you, Lord, that your power, your power is above all. I thank you, Lord, that there is no circumstances that we cannot put our faith and our trust in you. I thank you, Lord, that your word says the prayer of the righteous are powerful and effective. I thank you, Lord God, that not one would be lost. God, I thank you, Jesus, as we reach out to 
our community. God, as we reach out to our family and our friends, Lord God, that the truth and grace of Jesus Christ would arrest them into the kingdom of heaven. I thank you, Lord God, that we would see businesses excel. We would see people that are unemployed get employment, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that those suffering with mental illness would be released. I thank you, Lord, you bring dignity to the homeless. I thank you, God, that we lift all our needs up to the God. That there is no other God, no other name. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you watch over, that you are all good and you are all seeing. We love you, Lord, and we worship you alone. I thank you, Father, that you hear the cry on our heart. Lord, I thank you that you are good, no matter what our circumstances say. You are good. You are faithful. You are all powerful. You are the conqueror, and you are the King of Kings. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, Jesus. Give him a big hand. Stir him up in your heart. Stir yourself up to remind yourself who we serve. But thank you, Lord. Oh, he is good. He is so good. I'm so grateful for this church because no matter what you're going through, where you're at, you come into church and you're reminded of who he is and that's all that matters. So, hey, welcome to church, as I said before. And I'd like you, if you um, are visiting here, this is your first, maybe even second time, we would like to give you a big, warm welcome. So I'm going to ask you to be brave. You get a free cup of coffee and you don't even have to line up for it if you put your hand up, but only if you're new. So can I ask if there's anyone new here, please raise your hand so we can give you a big warm welcome. Nice to have visitors here. Hi, welcome. So can I encourage you, church, this week, why don't you make a goal to invite one person to church? Who needs Jesus? Who needs Jesus in your world? One person. Be bold, be courageous, pray about it and go. Invite someone to church next week. Bring a friend, and when you see them meet Jesus, you will be rejoicing more than anything. So take a minute now to say hello to someone you don't know, someone new. Make them feel welcome. Find your seat, church. Wrap up that conversation. Make sure you take someone out to lunch afterwards where you can finish up your chit-chat. Hey, look, you need to um, find your seat because we've got a very exciting announcement. Who likes exciting announcements? Can I hear you? Yes, I like exciting announcements. One person. Thank you, Nikki. So last week we announced the engagement of Emily McIntyre to Glenn Francis, right? But that was last week. Mind you, she's wearing the new rock on her finger, so you can all come and look at that now. But we've got another announcement, another engagement. Kathy Saunders and Tony Fru, where are you? Stand up, guys. This is very exciting. Can we give them a big, huge cheer? Tony's been our church for many, many years, and... This is an awesome story, and I'm sure they'd love to tell you after the service. Nobody nobody doesn't mind telling their story about how the proposal went, how the relationship went. So a, a huge congratulations to you guys. It's very exciting. We're celebrating with you as your church family. So that's wonderful. So it's off them and on to them. Hey, um... How many of you would have gone to our Vision Builders dinner some months ago? It's amazing. Like, incredible time where we go. We put the... Our money where our mouth is, so to speak. And we do great stuff with this. But 
Our money there, we're going to have a bit of an update in a minute, but right now we've got an amazing um, announcement. We actually finally bought our C3 Silverwater church building and land. Can we get excited about that? So right now, where they're meeting at church, that land is taken for Jesus Christ. I just see a stake in the ground there. It's something when you own it and you no longer rent. So we've got a um, video to celebrate that right now that we're going to show you. that we can celebrate their accomplishment. It's wonderful, wonderful. Hey, um, I'm so sorry. Before when I was announcing um, the passing of Brian Kent, I didn't say his surname, so it's Brian Kent. So my apologies about that to the Kent family and um, a reminder of their um, the funeral happening on Tuesday. So... Um, who um, remembers the creative gathering that we had oh, about a month or so ago? There were pink um, flamingos around the place. Happened to be on the State of Origin night. So most of you probably didn't go. It was packed out. It was amazing. Hey, they've got another one and it's not clashing with any sporting events. So that's exciting. So we can all go. It's Wednesday week, the uh, 19th. You're all welcome. It's going to be a panel of creative people but and business people. So... That's a good mix, okay? Business disciplines and creative mix. So come along to that at 7.30 in the auditorium Wednesday week. I said sports, I've got to mention, because if it was Mark Saunders up here, we'd be hearing all about it. How good was the game last night? Go the Wallabies! Phew! So sorry to all those New Zealanders. Pastor Mark Kelsey made someone wear a I Love New Zealand badge last night on the sound desk. Is that true? She blamed it on you. I said, get that off, because my Pastor Mark made me wear it. So going down, and Manly had a victory too, so that's exciting. It's such a good weekend. And who watches the cricket in winter, anyone? Nobody. Nobody. So who cares? It's not important. Hey, if you don't know who I am, by the way, and who's this? I'm, I'm married to this handsome guy down here. Yes, they call me blessed. And um, he's the canvas pastor, so, so am I. So we do this thing together. Real Men Promo. Okay, here we are, guys. You have to register. It's an awesome event in the life of our church. You've got a little brochure under your seat with all the details. Register so that we can organise it for you. It's not just for real blokey blokes, but it is. Alex Farncombe did a cracking announcement for it last week. He said that even he feels welcome and, and he's creative and thin and wears tight jeans. So he, he loves it. So if you're a guy, come on, register. If you've already registered, why don't you bring a mate and come along? It's going to be great. We've got a little promo for you. So let's have a look at that. here today. Stir up the gift that's inside of you. Into the day, you've got what it takes to do the call that God's put on your life. You've got the gift. Stir it up. We want to see the very best in men's lives in the local church. That's how you impact the city.
Okay. One of the speakers, John Pierce, he's the overseer for our C3 um, Australia churches. He also owns a business. He's going to be fantastic. So it's not just pie eating, meat eating, cowboy riding. The Word of God will be in there as well. It's important. Okay, Reuben, come up here. We're going to take up our tithes and offerings right now. So on your seat, there's envelopes. There's up on the screens different ways to give. This, this is the campus pastor. This is my husband, Rubes. He's such a legend. Give him a big hand. Make him feel welcome. Who thinks Deb's doing a great job? Yeah. Woo! I think she's doing a great job. Hey, uh, we're going to come around our time of giving right now. Your options are on your seat and on the screen behind us. I'm going to read this morning from Jeremiah 29, verse 10 to 11. And it says this, this is what the Lord says, you will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And in the message it says this, this is, this is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up, and not a day before, I will show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. And you know, this is what I love about God is God has a great plan for you and is always looking after you. And I, I remember having this own revelation in my life when I was uh, a teenager, I would have been about 17 or 18 years of age, I just got uh, my P's license and uh, so had all my friends and who knows, young boys with licenses are not the greatest thing in the world. Anyway, I remember uh, having two significant moments in my life. One was we were in a car, uh, I was in the car with three friends and my friend was driving and uh, we were driving up around West Head in a little red Holden Barina and uh, my friend was going way too fast and uh, we came around the corner, uh, slid on the dirt and went over the cliff and rolled two and a half times and uh, I remember ending up upside down, we all got out of the car without a scratch on us and we looked down and there was a rock probably about this size that had stopped us from going any further and all the way down, it just kept going and going and going. And we would have all died that, that night in that car. There was not one more rock within 100 metres of us. It was blank. There was just this one single rock. I knew God was looking after me at that time. I knew that he had a plan for my life. Yeah, give him a clap. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Literally, two weeks later... I was in the car with another one of my idiot friends and he thought it would be really good around the back of Garden Street in Wood to see how fast he could go. He got up to 120 kilometres an hour and uh, we came around the corner and went straight into a parked car and um, slid for about 100 metres down the road and there was three of us in the car again and we all got out without a scratch. and. I met my friend who was driving, I haven't seen him in years and years, and uh, he was at a party about six weeks ago at a 40th party that I went to, and uh, we were just talking to him and he said uh, that he was a Christian and went to church, and uh, I was surprised because I remember back at the time he was certainly not a Christian, uh, he certainly didn't, certainly didn't drive like a Christian, um, but I remember asking him uh, what, what his salvation journey was, how did he meet God? And he'd never told me this, but he said it was back at that car accident. He said, when we came around the corner and I knew we were going to hit the car, he said everything went into slow motion. He's not a Christian. And he heard God say to him, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. And miraculously it was and I know that God looked after us that day and he, he wants to look after you he, he has great plans for your life he has great plans for my life and I know that when whenever I do things from now on I know I do it with faith that God is going to look after me and he loves me you know in my work life I know that I act in faith 
when I'm making decisions, I act in faith knowing that God's going to look after me. In my family life, I make decisions for my family out of faith and not fear because I know that God has a great plan for us. And the same goes for my giving. When I give into the house of God, I know that he's going to look after me and my family. And that makes it so much easier to let go of that money into his kingdom because I know he's got a great plan. So as we give this morning, I'm just going to pray over you, but know that God is going to look after you. That circumstance, he has a great plan for you. Let's just pray right now. Lord, touch every person in this place as they give this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you have great plans for them, great plans to prosper and not harm them. Lord, you will come through and look after your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Why don't we uh, look to the screen right now? We have our Vision Builders video. Hey everybody and welcome to our Vision Builders update for August 2015 and as always a huge thank you to all of our partners who are helping us impact one life at a time in this city and beyond. Through your generous support every single day people are receiving practical care, hope and dignity. In this update, we celebrate the opening of C3 Care Centres, our high school ministry, among loads of other things. But let's start by having a look at the highlights of our recent Vision Builders Dinner, the largest sit-down dinner in Sydney. important message and the most powerfully transforming spirit enabling to constantly win this war for the souls of men and women everywhere in every nation throughout our world. That's what I see in Jesus' name. Amen. That was one spectacular night. Last month, our Filipino leaders gathered for the Southeast Asia Conference Manila. We were blessed to hold this conference in the new Samsung Hall in Global City. 700 C3 delegates from the Philippines were blessed with an exceptional worship experience and received life-changing messages and ministry from our many world-class conference speakers. C3 Cares continues to expand throughout Sydney with a care service started up on the northern beaches, providing a monthly dinner and other services to people in need. Also through our Silverwater and Penrith campuses, C3 Cares is now in Mount Druitt, serving local families and supplying food hampers. There are now seven C3 Care Centres across Sydney, with many more soon to start. Hi Church, the Beyond initiatives are expanding all the time and we have many volunteer positions available right across Sydney, either in our C3 care centres or with single mum support or with chaplaincy with many groups having vacancies or serving as a scripture teacher in one of our local schools. Please come and visit us at the volunteer information desk after the service. God bless. Recently, C3 Oxford Falls hosted the inaugural Hope Summit event as part of our Revolution Red initiative, led by Glenn Garayan. We had 13 high-caliber speakers representing the seven spheres of society, with each speaker giving an 18-minute talk about hope. What a brilliant event it turned out to be. Make sure you don't miss next year's Hope Summit. Our new friends and partners, Homes for Heroes, continue to receive more ex-servicemen and women suffering with PTSD. So last week we donated our third Tarago vehicle to help transport this growing number of young war heroes needing treatment. To finish our update, we have a beautiful testimony about Emily, a 16-year-old girl from Davidson High that was impacted through our scripture team. I was a pretty lonely kid in my childhood. I didn't have many friends. I spent a lot of my junior school years alone at the playground, being a nerd, reading a book. And um, that sort of affected me in a pretty big way. I suffered from anxiety and depression. I was really struggling. Like, I didn't go out of the house much. I was a bit of a recluse, to be perfectly honest. and. Like, all I wanted to do was sleep and stay in the house. I was depressed. I was hurting myself in ways that I shouldn't. Around mid-year nine, I moved here to Sydney. I went to the scripture class and met a girl named Tammy who goes to C3 here. And she showed me the ropes in a new way, a way that I could really relate to. 
and that piqued my curiosity and me being a curious person wanted to know more and I saw that Lindsay was holding a lunchtime group and I decided to rock up and see what all the fuss was about. Lindsay invited me to an event called Groundswell here at C3 Youth and it was an amazing event and the thing that really pulled me in was the atmosphere. I saw God like like as an out of body experience I saw him with his hand on my shoulder telling me that everything would be alright and that he was here for me and that he would help me be strong in the tough times and yeah it was it was a really great experience. It's looking up. I have a great friendship group, people that I can sort of really talk deeply with and those who I can talk with like about God and those who I'm trying to bring into his presence. I'm really looking forward to what God's going to bring into my life, what he's going to lead me through, and I'm going to have a great life no matter where it takes me, no matter where Jesus takes me. Once again, church, thank you for your outstanding commitment and faithfulness in being a vision builder. You really are making a massive impact in so many people's lives, like Emily, every single day. God bless. Come on, isn't that incredible? Why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to sing out some praises to Jesus. Thank Him for all He's done. Isn't it great to know that as vision builders, we're making an impact in the city, saving people who are lost, helping those in need. That's what it's about. It's what the love of Jesus is for, yeah? I'm going to sing out, I know heaven's knocking. I know heaven's knocking. section of the song is declaring the love of Christ. We just saw everything that we do here as a church. Saw the story of a girl who came into this church and got saved. Found a family, found a home. That's the love of Jesus in work. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. That's what love us in this time. Let's declare the love of Jesus over our life. Let's declare the love of Jesus over this church. Let's declare the love of Jesus over this city, over every lost and hurting soul out there in the world. Anybody who needs help, anybody who needs protection, we're going to declare the love of Jesus over their life today. Oh, your love, oh, your love is so wonderful, unshakable. You love, oh, your love is so wonderful, unshakable, undeniable. Oh, your love, your love is so wonderful, 
fantastic. Come on, give it a lot another hand. Worship him. So good. All right. Lift your hands right now. Reach out to God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We're open vessels. Here we are again in your house. All of us, the great people of God. And we're ready to hear the word of God. We're ready to receive. We're ready, Father, to shake our world for Jesus. We, Father, we thank you right now that every life, every need that's in this room right now that you are touching. Like Reuben said earlier, Lord, you know the plans you have for every one of us, Father. Plans for good, not for evil. And we thank you, Lord, the glory of God is all over. Lord, your people, your house, your church. Fill us right now, Lord. Fill us, Father, with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Come on, give a little one more hand. That's great. You may be seated. Thanks, guys. Thanks, team. Great job. Awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. If I could have a little bit more house light, that would be great. Fantastic. So I can see all the great faces, especially Jamie Malcolm's. Yeah, who loves Jamie Malcolm? Who loves his face? Great job on the screen there, by the way. It's awesome. <laughs> Stop it, right? Stop it. Hey, uh, how good is that story of Emily? Uh, I don't know if, about you, but I, I see stuff like that, and I'm like, and I know it's always all worth it, but it really makes me feel like that's really all worth it. Uh, and, like, and that's just one of thousands of stories. You know, there's, there's campuses all over the city. There's services happening right now. Manly was planted last week, 111 people in the first service. Like, my goodness, it was packed. So that's great news. Uh, yeah, come on, give a Lord a hand. That's great. So good. And, uh, and it's awesome. And huge thanks to the scripture teachers, uh, the, the girls, the guys doing that, our youth pastors, our high school pastors, right, Alex, Mitch, and all the crew. They're, they're the crew. That, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on out there. So, so, and it's good to be part of the answer. It's good to be, you know, uh, Christians who are active and doing and involved in our faith, which is awesome. Fantastic. And by the way, Deb, that wasn't me who placed a All Blacks badge. That was Mark Saundercock. That was the, that was the evil one. Uh, I'm a Wallabies fan, you know. Come on, you know, All Blacks. About time we flip and beat the All Blacks. That's what I... Sorry, guys. Sorry. Just had to get that out. You know, that's uh, uh, fantastic. For those of you who don't like rugby, it doesn't really matter. It's all good. Hey, uh, good stuff. Well, who's ready to get into the Word of God? Most of you, that's awesome. All right, guess what? We're preaching Psalm 23. How, how's that for a surprise? Psalm 23, I think we're up to week six or seven. Don't even know we're up to, but I'm loving it. Seven, thank you, Beck. Uh, week seven, Psalm 23, verse 5c, which says, My cup runs over. Four words, my cup runs over. Everybody say that after me. My cup runs over. Say it again. My cup runs over. So here we have a cup. We have a cup. And the, the cup in the scriptures represents really essentially your lot in life. I'm not going to throw it on anyone. Trust me, it's all good. Hey, uh, and uh, this cup, a cup, the cup in the scriptures, when it talks about my cup, when David said my cup, he's, he's describing his life. He's not only saying my life runs over. The, the, my life, the container of my life. So I have to say this. I see Jim McFarlane there. And Jim McFarlane just recently turned 70. No. No? When? Wednesday. That doesn't matter. It's coming up soon. So uh, stand up, Jim McFarlane. He's, wor he's worth mentioning no matter what anyway. Sorry, I got those few details wrong, but I saw something recently. Awesome. Everybody say, no way. <laughs> now back to the cup. That's, now that David, when David was saying, my cup runs over, he's saying, my life runs over. And isn't that awesome? And the, today's message is a very simple message. It's a message basically of is saying, what is our spiritual position in life? And you, I want to tell you through the scriptures that your spiritual position in life is that your cup is running over. It's not empty. It's not half full. You know, there's, apparently there's half full and half empty people. I always get those confused, which is which and which is the positive. But I want to tell you this morning, you are neither. 
You are a cup running over person. You are, you're not a half full, half empty person. You're not sort of positive or so, sort of negative. No, God is for you. God is on your side. God is filling your life. He's causing your life to run over. Come on, who's with you this morning? God wants to overflow your life in God. That's, that's God's spiritual position for you. Now, unfortunately, sometimes all of us in life don't feel like, and this is just feelings and experiences rather than spiritual reality, sometimes we feel like it's not a full cup or an overflowing cup. We feel like it's a horrible cup. And, and life isn't running over. Life's running out. And we feel like we're running out of things. And that's not good. Running out of time, money, energy, the big three. Who would like more time, money, and energy? Anyone? Uh, and sometimes we feel like, sure, life's running over. It's just running over with the wrong things. All the wrong stuff, things like anger, fear, and anxiety. Or other things like, my budget's running over. Who's ever done a house renovation? The house renovation budget is running over. and Because when when we've done five stages of our house renovation, every time it's, it's like it costs more money and takes longer than you expect. And I'd get these phone calls, 10 o'clock every morning, you know, oh, sorry we found this, and sorry we discovered this, and the budget would run over. Who's sick of those things, anyone? Uh, and my, uh, my, my Visa card bill is running over. Uh, that's terrible. My f- iPhone storage always runs over. That's terrible. Your f- iPhone, you're taking, just about to take a photo that's going to change the world. And it says, you haven't got enough storage on that. Who's sick of these things? Anyway, I'm sick of these things. You know, I, I threw it to safe young hands and Alex there. How about other things that run over? The, 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 my intolerance on the road. Uh, that for me, it doesn't. For some of you, that runs over on a regular basis. You know, How about the garbage bin runs over? What is that? We recycle. We buy organic produce. And yet every week, that garbage bin is filled. Like, like it's crazy. And of course, therefore, every Sunday night, I've got to run up and down my street in my PJs looking for empty bins to build for the... Come on, you admit it, you do that as well, or maybe that, no, Paul doesn't, that's, that's, that's a good. So things, life has a way of running over, but sometimes with not the best things. But I want to tell you this morning, in Christ, your cup runs over with blessing. In Christ, as you head into faith and put faith in your heart and faith in your spirit, you cannot have a running out life or a negatively running over life, but a, a life that is not a horrible cup, but a blessed cup. Or maybe it's not a horrible cup. Maybe it's the wrong cup. Sometimes our life feels like it's not full of Christ and the blessings of Christ, but full of crises. Second Kings 6.25 says, A cup of dove's dung sold for five pieces of silver. That represented a very bad season in Israel history when, when, and represented a bad stage, a, a crisis stage where, where their cup was full of dove, dove's dung. And sometimes life can feel like that. My, my life isn't full of great things. It's full of, I won't say the word, but full of dove's dung, full of bad things. But I want to give you a great scripture to counteract that this morning. Psalm 16, verse 5. It says, Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You got all that is mine. I'm telling you, when Christ gets in your world, when Christ gets in your life, your life is no longer filled with crises. Your life is filled with Christ. And he brings with him blessing. He brings with him. When we are in Christ, we are in blessing. And it may not always feel that way. And of course we all face crises. Of course we all face challenges. But, but when you have Christ in you, he is greater than those challenges. He is greater than those crises. And Christ in you is the hope of glory. You know, it's, and, and the tough times are there sometimes. But, 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 you know, once we recognize what Christ has done for us, it overcomes all those other things. Well, maybe it's not a, the wrong cup. Maybe it's other people's cup. Because sometimes we look at other people's lives and think their life is better than my life. And that's so true. It's like, and, and we compare ourselves. One of the worst things we can do is compare ourselves from a distance with other people's lives. And of course, we live in the world of social media. We live in the world of Instagram. 
And it seems that Insta- everyone's life on Instagram is better than your life, right? And, we, look, and we, we see these photos and we see, I've started following a few surfing Instagram uh, uh, sites, you know, and it's horrible. They're these people that they've got these perfect lives that travel from one exotic location to another with perfect surf and perfect bodies and, 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 life. and I'm like, I hate you. You're, you're horrible. It's because everybody else's life seems more perfect than yours. But usually it isn't. I was talking to a friend recently who was at a party and was just happened to see two young ladies that she knew as friends and they were sitting in a corner by themselves. No one was talking to them. They looked a little lonely, a little depressed, a little out of sorts. And she thought, oh, gee, I hope they're okay. That They don't look like they're having much fun at all. Then she just happened to check her Instagram account and she, and she just stumbled across a post of, that one of them did at that very moment saying at this raging party having an absolute incredible time and she's looking at the literally looking at the photo and looking at the reality at the same time going what is wrong with this picture this is crazy I want to tell you those people are not having a great time they're as miserable as you are so <laughs> but in Christ we're not miserable is that right in Christ we're not miserable say it after me in Christ I'm not miserable <laughs> There's a psalm, Psalm 73 is a psalm that's dedicated to comparing our lives with others. The whole psalm, all 29 verses are dedicated to comparing our lives with others. Let's read the first few verses. We won't read the whole thing because we don't have time. First few verses. Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. That's a good statement. It has this, but as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And this whole psalm dedicated to looking at other people's lives. And it seems like those who don't know God, those who don't pursue righteousness, those who do the wrong thing are blessed. But it's only a perception. It's only a a, a fleeting thing. Because if we go right through to verse 16, if we can jump over to verse 16, Uh, and read there and it says when I thought how to understand this it was too painful for me check this next verse until I went into the sanctuary of God then I understood their end I'm telling you once you come into the house of God and the house of God's aim every week is to remind us of who we are and what we've got and if and really all my aim is all the aim of God's house is weekly is to shift our perspective every single week and to not compare ourselves to people who look like they're prospering but compare ourselves to the word of God and recognize of what God has done in our life come on give the Lord a hand for that that's awesome so it's it's you know comparing ourselves to other people's cup or the other people's virtual cup their virtual cup and their virtual cup is not what you think it is And God is not interested in in you comparing yourself to other people's cup. God is interested in filling your cup. God has a purpose for you. He wants to fill your life. He wants to prosper your life. He wants to cause your life to be a great blessing and to be filled with blessing. Who believes that, anyone? So that's, that's that's three bad cups. Horrible, wrong, and others. How about what's the best cup? The ultimate cup. The ultimate cup is found as we read... And discover this in Matthew chapter 26. And we read the story of Jesus. Thank God for Jesus, right? And in in Matthew 26, in verse 39, it says, Going a little farther. This is is Jesus now. In the last night, in the night he was betrayed, he was with the disciples. You know the story. He's with the disciples having a meal. They finished the meal. And it says he went a little farther. I love that. Jesus went further than what they could go. And he went into a place, and he went into this place of prayer and deep intercession with the Father as he agonized over something that he was about to do. And it says, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you, you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you not... Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is weak. 
willing, sorry, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away from me, unless I drink it, may your will be done. And here we see this incredible journey of, of Jesus going on this journey as, as, he, as he was looking figuratively, not literally, figuratively to this cup that he was later literally and spiritually about to drink. And as he was looking at that and understanding what was in that cup. Now, we've talked about all sorts of cups and all sorts of things that are in this cup. But for Jesus, he was about to do something that would change our lives and change the course of history forever. All to do with the drinking of a cup. So in the Old Testament, there were two other cups. In the Old Testament, there was the cup of iniquity, the cup of sin. And as men sinned, then the cup of iniquity would fill. And as the cup of iniquity filled, in other words, it talks about the, res- the holding back of God's judgment. As it filled, the overflow would, then would cause the overflow of God's judgment. And so here we see the picture and the story in the Old Testament of the sinfulness of man overflowing into the judgment of God. And so as Jesus took this cup, what was in that cup? Both those things were in that cup. The sin of man, our sin and God's judgment are in that cup. And as, and as he partook of that cup, he drank that, that, that cup. Thank God, who's thankful that Jesus actually took that cup? By the way, he had a choice. He had a choice. He wanted God to take it away from him. He wanted the Father to have some other way. But he realized that unless he drank the cup of suffering, we would not partake of the cup of salvation. He took the whole thing. Every sin, every disease, every poverty, every judgment, everything that was wrong with humanity humanity was in that cup. I can't even imagine spiritually that being the case. And the, and the agony, the separation the experience from God as he began to drink. And he didn't drink it halfway. He didn't drink, you know, it's like, you know, when you have medicine or you just don't want to finish this thing. He just, he swallowed the whole thing and took on himself the judgment of God against all of humanity. Imagine, imagine every sin that ever was, is, or will be committed. And the judgment that relates to that, all being in the cup and then partaking that into one human being. And Jesus said, I'm going to drink that cup for you. I'm going to take that. Come on, give the Lord a hand for that. That's incredible. I'm like, I'm like, that's crazy. Because as he drank the cup of suffering, we partake now the cup of salvation. We do not have to take and drink anymore the cup of suffering. We do not have to drink the cup of judgment. And our cup of iniquity is empty. And our cup of blessing is full. Oh, my goodness. And this is reality. This isn't like some, oh, yes, that's spiritually, yeah, I I sort of basically get it. uh, And and it's great. No, we're talking, this is reality. If we only knew the perspective of heaven towards our life and towards what God has for us is amazing. It's amazing. And so we now as Christians partake of a new cup. Our sin and God's judgment are no longer in it, just blessing. As we look into this cup, there is no longer sin or judgment. There is just blessing in that cup. All we need to do is keep filling it and keep drinking it. Keep filling it and keep drinking it, the blessing of God. And it's an amazing thing. So what's in this cup? Good thing to know. Who would like to know what's in the cup? Well, let me tell you, I've, I've already you know, alluded to some of it. Complete salvation and the absence of guilt shame and human effort that's pretty good everybody say complete salvation you the, the, in that cup the cup of salvation is your salvation how about this unhindered access to the person and presence of god unhindered you can you can gain access you can at any time at any any day any time Anywhere you are, any place you are, you can gain complete access. You can just think about God and you're into the presence of God. How, did, how was that achieved? By Jesus drinking the cup of suffering. We are now the cup of salvation. But in that cup is the unhindered presence of God. You're on, the, you're on your way home this afternoon. You can be driving in your car. Yes, your car. And you can experience the presence of God. And you can, and you can rejoice. You can sing. You can, you can laugh. You can experience all that God has for you. What, what's another thing that's in that cup? Abundant provision is in that cup. Abundant provision. Now, this is, gonna, this is going to 
test and push against some of your religious consciences here this morning. I know it did mine 35 years ago when I walked into this church and Pastor Phil began to preach the New Testament of, of provision. And, but I couldn't deny it. As I saw the scriptures, I realized that I couldn't deny that God wants us to prosper. Second Corinthians, this is a cannibalistic scripture, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Uh, anyway, that's a joke. It's cannibal scripture. You know, that's, that's good. The chapel service, it was like a wave of laughter went down the back and then came back again and then stopped. Uh, you heard about the two cannibals are eating a clown? Did you hear about that one? And one said to the other, does this taste funny to you? And, uh, anyway, sorry. Anyways, moving right along. 2 Corinthians 8 9, let's read the scripture. Check this out. 2 Corinthians 8. So the, the team are going, which scripture are you referring to? 2 Corinthians 8 9. There we go. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Check this out. Check this out. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. I try to work my way around that scripture, over-spiritualize it, interpret it in a way that doesn't... The, the context of that, the actual story that Paul is writing that from is a context of raising money. And he's trying to encourage them, guys, even though you may not have a lot of money in the bank, God will provide your needs. He is a God who wants to cause you to prosper. In this cup is a cup of abundant provision. And as we look to Christ, as we look to him, there is provision. Who needs provision in their life? Anyone? Well, Christ has that answer, which is awesome. Come on, give the Lord a hand for that. That's incredible. All right. What, what, else, is, what else is in that cup? Purpose and meaning are in that cup. You go to that cup, there's a call of God in there. There's, there's like vision. There's like purpose. As you drink the cup of blessing, there's, you, it, you don't become just an inactive Christian. You've got purpose. And, the, uh, the, and uh, it's an overflowing cup. I'm sure there's, someone put a grasshopper in here or something. It's jumping around. But, but it, the, the blessing of God and the purpose of God, when we've joined this church, we didn't just become saved, that God gave us a purpose in life, which is awesome. Christ's community of friendship is in that cup. You go to that cup and there are friends in there. There are people in there. Some, some of them you, you think, what are you doing there? I need you to get out of there. Uh, but there's, there's, there's people, there's connections, there's friendships, which is awesome. What else is in there? Family blessing with a difference. Not perfect family, blessed family. And God, those of you who are struggling in family life, I'm telling you, God wants your family blessed and he wants them breaking through. The abundant cup of God wants to achieve that. There's spirit of faith and boldness in there. But the question to us this morning as we finish is this. How do we keep our cup full and running over? It's one thing to know that Christ is in you, that, that Christ is for you, that your cup is running over. But how do we keep it full? How do we understand this and how do we keep a full life in that regard. Well, here's the deal. Number one, you've got to keep filling your cup with the right things. In the scriptures, it talks about two things that go in that cup, water and wine. And I believe that we need to keep filling our cup with both. The water represents the word of God. We've got to keep filling our cup with the word of God. And as we look at the words, we look at our circumstances. As we look at our circumstances, the circumstances and your context keeps telling you that your cup is empty. Your circumstances keep telling you that, that life is not, going to be, is not going to provide good things for you. It's like, no, the business thing didn't come through and, and life is not for me. I'm telling you, that's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that God is for you, that He is not against you. How's this scripture in Romans 8? I urge you this week, read Romans 8 again. Romans 8 is the pinnacle of the book of Romans. And the book of Romans is the pinnacle of the New Testament. It is the thesis of New Testament theology and the pinnacle of that is Romans 8 and right in the middle of Romans 8 is 8, Romans 8 31 and 32 that says this if we can read that what then shall we say in response to these things if God is for us who can be against us verse 32 he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things how awesome is that God wants to give you all things. If he's given you Christ, he wants to give you all things. What we do, when we, every time we read the word, it re, is, the, is the water coming into our cup and filling us up again with truth, 
with life with God's perspective. Come on, who's excited about this today? That's the deal, the life of God. Here's the deal. We're looking at the Word, and then we turn away from the Word, and we go, oh, no, life's no good, and life's empty, and it's hard, and what have you. Look back to the Word and go, no, God is for me. He's going to get me through this thing. The power of God is on me. The Word of God, I can't survive without the Word of God. And I don't just mean the preaching of the Word. I mean the reading and the responding to the Word of God. As I read it, I need it. I need it. Because I get as discouraged as you do. I know that's hard to believe. But I'm like, oh my goodness, God is on the throne. God's alive. I have access to the presence of God. I can get back into the God's glory. His provision is going to come my way. When you hit circumstances, you need water in your cup. You need water. Water is the word. The washing of the water of the word. You need water in your cup. And some, some, when your water levels, your word water levels go down, what fills up the gap is the world. The difference in the cup is the world fills up the difference of what the water is not. So if you fill up the water levels of the word of God, there's no room in your cup for the world. It's only the water and you will overflow into people's lives. And as you're with them, the water is going to spill out into other people's lives because the word of God spilling out into them. And that's the deal. Get the ratio of the water greater than the ratio of the world and you will find an abundant cup upon your life. That's awesome. Read the word. Okay. Simple plan number one, read the word, read the Bible, read it, meditate on it, and you'll discover the water levels. Just go up. You're, some of you are sitting here this morning going, I don't feel my cup's overflowing. And it's because it's not, if it is, it's overflowing with the world. Let it overflow with the water. The second thing the Bible talks about filling your cup with is wine. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> Wine. Wine is not necessary. But in some ways it is because wine represents life. Wine represents celebration. Wine represents the Holy Spirit. Wine represents the joy and the hope of heaven. As we worship, we get filled with wine. As we read, we get filled with water. As we worship, we get filled with wine. And you need both water and wine. You need both content and and breakthrough, and the, and the wine of heaven. So therefore, when we worship, every time, I wor- every time you worship and lift your hands up, so it's like you've got the top of your cup open up and wine is pouring in. That's why joy comes when you worship. Oh, this is, this is pretty good preaching. And uh, this is like, and, and, and you, you thought, you thought it was something a little bit more complex. You, know, you thought it was going to change the subject or, or come up with another plan or some deep revelation of, of, of some if you if you do that and that three times and, and or something or some crazy move that, that that's going to do it. no it's the same thing it's the water and the wine it's the word and worship as you keep doing it your cup is filling and every time your cup fills it's like i feel good i feel good i feel good they uh bernie showed me a survey that she was reading about yesterday that talked about, no, I'll get into that later. I'll actually get into, it relates to one of my other points. I'll come to that. So number one, make sure you're filling your cup with the right stuff. Who's got that so far, all right? Number two, keep drinking from the cup. Keep drinking from the cup. So if I leave that cup of water there and don't touch it, it's going to go dead, stagnant, horrible. But if I, keep, if I drink it, guess what? Every time you drink of God's presence and drink of what he's provided, he keeps refilling it. Because here's the, here's the deal. It's okay to be blessed. Some of you have not learnt to receive. So when God provides, drink. When he provides money, use it. When he provides friends, have them. When he, when, when, like, receive. If you do not learn to receive, he cannot give you more. If you do not use what you're given, you cannot get more. God has no, there's no limit to God's supply. He will, he will provide, there is no limit to his healing, no limit to his grace, no limit to his financial provision, no limit to the power of God. There's no limit. But what we've got to do is learn to receive. So keep drinking so he can keep filling. And that's the glory of God. Number three, number three is that, Keep giving. Keep sharing the cup. Because here's the deal. Watch this. The cup is filled for you 
but is overflowing for others. God wants to fill the cup for you. So the filling, God fills the cup for you, for you to drink. But it's overflowing for others. I kept that away from the electrics, WHS, that's all good. And, 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 and the, the filling is for you. But God says this, my cup overflows. The overflowing is for others. Come and say, oh, what a waste. No, it's not a waste because it's the overflow that's for others. As it, as, it, as it fills my life, I'm like, I feel awesome. I feel incredible. But it's not just for you. It's for others. And the overflow, every place you're in, every context you're in, every job you're at, every cafe you're in, you don't realize, but there's an overflowing cup that's pouring out of your life and both water and wine are both pouring out. There's the word of God, there's principles, there's wisdom, there's life, there's, there's keys to life, but then there's hope and there's joy and, there's, and, and, and those things are flowing out of your life as well. Others, you, you, we need to be filled and overflowing for the sake of others. Keep overflowing so others can, be, can benefit of that. You know, uh, Bernie and I, we... Uh, obviously jumping on and off a lot of planes recently, but we flew in from Melbourne the other night. And I just saw out of the corner of my eye a guy that I'd met a couple of times in our local area. And, and, uh, and I thought, but then I lost sight of him. And then as we got off the plane, we ran into him again and we, we connected and we went, hey, and we figured out, oh, that's right, that's who we are, we're, that's where I know you're from. And we started chatting and, and then we wheeled our bags to the, the pickup area for the car and then we ended up being in the, in the shuttle together and, and he was leaning into conversation with us and started sharing his heart and sharing some of the challenge he's having because he knew we were pastors. And I don't know, this, when, when, you, when you've got an overflowing cup, it's like people start to drink. They drink of your spirit, you know, and it's awesome. And, and we had this great conversation for maybe 30 minutes and we exchanged numbers and we're going we're gonna to connect and, and get things happening, which is awesome. But you know what? On the way home in our car, Bernie and I felt, we felt more filled after that situation because the moment you overflow to others, God pours in new life and new wine and new spirit and new water and new wine to you. Get it out. I mean, one of the great experiences for us years and years ago, and I've told this story before, is that and we were young, brand new pastors on staff. And after church one Sunday, I uh, invited a couple, a whole family actually, to our place for lunch. One problem. I forgot to tell Bernie. Uh, and so we went home. And we're at home, and, and I don't know what happened. We got into a, and they, Bernie still didn't know this, and we just got into a little conversation, Bernie and I, about something. And... And then we start arguing about something, and and we you know, and look to this day I can't even remember what it was. It ended up being some benign thing, but you know who knows that most most arguments are usually pretty about nothing. So we got into this argument, and halfway through this argument, there's a knock on the door, and I open the door, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then I had to go back to Bernie and go oh, to add, you know salt to the wound by the way there's a family of a whole bunch of people out there who I, I forgot to tell you we invited for lunch <laughs> Bernie being who's the real Christian in the marriage uh, she said no worries let's 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 do this let's do this you know so she whizzed up some incredible meal out of nothing and we had this incredible meal we hang out for two or three hours and laughed and fellowshiped and we helped this couple through this thing at the end, then they, we said goodbye, bye, bye, bye. And I was going, oh, no, we're going to, you know, what's going to happen after lunch? And, uh, <laughs> shut the door. And then we, we looked at each other and we are like, what were we arguing about again? We, for, we could not even remember what the argument is because the moment you pour out into other people's lives, something shifts on the inside of you. Back to the... Back to the survey, the survey that Bernie read and showed me yesterday was that they did a survey in the States in 2007 where they, they, they measured people's emotional health and state and they, they measured people who did all the things that they wanted to do, all the things they enjoyed, all the things that they would choose if they had the choice. And then they measured up the emotional health and state of people who, who helped others, who served others, what have you. The people... The people who did whatever they wanted to do 
were very limited in their joy and their hope. In fact, they found that they, they it capped off and in fact went backwards. They got more discouraged and more depressed and what have you. These people over here who poured out and served others were the happiest of all. This is a non-Christian survey. You realize that the life of God, your, as your cup runneth over, it runneth over into other people's lives. God is good. Okay, the fourth thing, the fourth way to keep your cup full is this. Okay. Sorry about for the mess over there. The cup belongs at the table. That's where it's filled. That's where it's filled. When, when you come into the house of God, where do you get your cup from? You get it from the table. What's the table? The table is the community of Christ. The table is the body of Christ. The table is the fellowship of God's people. And that's where your cup is. So God says, when you're amongst God's people, even now, Oh, so that's way too full to pick up. As even now, that, that cup is full. So what people do, I, I, I've got to do this to illustrate, sorry. You, you, and what people do is they take the cup from the table and they remove themselves from the table. They remove themselves from fellowship, from church, from, from people. And like this. But they've got the cup in their hand. They got, they've still got the cup. They go, awesome, cheers. That's, oh. that's water in there, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, and, 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 they, and they, they're just drinking of the water, the blessing, because they've got the cup in their hands. But what happens is they keep drinking and say, this is great, but eventually this runs out. Eventually the cup empties. And then after a while they, realize, they think, how come there's no blessing on my life anymore? How come there's no blessing on my marriage or my business or my, my life anymore? Because what happens is you've got to keep bringing that cup the cup isn't filled out in universal land somewhere. The cup is filled back at the table. And as, as we keep bringing our lives back into communion with Christ, back into communion with the people of God, back into the house of God, the cup gets filled again, and then you can take it out and drink it, which is awesome, which is awesome. Some of you need to return to the table. And as a pastor, we've been pastoring for over 30 years. I have seen this happen literally thousands of times where people forget where they were first blessed. People forget where they found their wife, where they found their husband, where they found the blessing, where they found the job, where they found the purpose. And then they remove themselves from it and wonder why the blessing stops. So I tell you what, for me, for me and my house, we're going to be in the house of God. We're going to be serving God. I recognize, I know for us, I recognize my blessing is not because of my gift. I don't have any. Uh, my blessing is not because of my personality. Haven't got much of a one, uh, but my blessing is because I bring my life and my family back to the table of the Lord. It is the connections with Christ and his community. In the New Testament, you can't separate Christ from his body. You cannot separate that. Your relationship with Christ is not an individual one only. It is that. It is, it is both individual and corporate at the same time. So the question is, are you at the table? Are you around other believers? Because that's where your cup's going to be filled. By the way, that's when you enjoy the drink, most importantly. It is around the fellowship of God's people. Amen? So some of you need to get back to the table, which is awesome. Can we give the Lord a hand this morning and uh, thank him for his goodness? All right. Can we stand to our feet as we finish right now? Have the band up. That would be great. As we're standing, I would love you just to, to lift your hands right now, like you're lifting up the top of your cup, as you, as, like you've got the sides of your cup and it's opening up. And some of you right now, your cup is full and it's overflowing. And all, I'm gonna, all that's going to happen right now is it's going to be more overflow. It's going to be just like a washout. It's just going to be awesome. For some of you, your cup is like so dry it's like just, it's bottoming out. And that's okay because you're in the right place because God is for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? For some of you, you feel like your cup of provision is done. You, in fact, it's, it's, it's below empty. God's going to provide. And all, all that God wants for you to, to, this morning is to recognize that He is your provider and that He is going to look after that situation. For some of you, your emotional cup is completely empty. God's going to fill you with life, fill you with encouragement, fill you with emotional energy. For some of you, your relational cup is not good. God wants to fill you with life and peace and restoration. Whatever it is that your cup needs to fill with, come on, reach out to God right now. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the glory of God just come upon, Lord, your people in the mighty name of Jesus. We worship you. And right now, just as before we finish the service, why don't you just worship God? Just begin to thank Him. Just thank Him, church. Your thankfulness causes an overflow of God's provision and God's power and God's life. Every time you thank Him, you defeat the enemy who's trying to empty your cup. And you thank God as He begins to fill your life with all that you need. God is for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, begin to cry out to God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to pray and seek Him. There's life flowing through your heart. Life flowing through your life right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just as we finish, I would just you can put your hands down just for a moment. And just close your eyes and bow your heads. For some of you today, you don't know Christ. You don't know that person who I was talking about before, who took the cup for you. Your cup of sin, your cup of judgment, your cup of suffering. He took that cup and he drank it so that you don't have to drink that cup, but drink the cup of blessing. If Some of you don't know Christ. <clears throat> for real and he's extending his hand out right now and going I'm giving you a free gift the gift of grace gift of salvation if you're here today and you don't know Christ for real or maybe you did once know Christ but you've fallen away from God and it's time to come back to Christ time to come back and return or maybe you're here today and you go I don't know I don't know you're talking I don't know whether I know Christ I don't know whether I don't God wants to give you the assurance that you do. So just with every eye closed, every head bowed, if you're here today and you don't know Christ, you want to come back to Christ, or you want to be sure you have Him in your world, just slip your hand up right now. Across this auditorium, if that's you, just slip your hand up. Awesome. Just slip your hand up right now. Don't be afraid. It's the most important thing you'll ever do right now. I don't want to rush this, but if that's you, just slip your hand up and say, Mark, that's me. Pray for me. Right now, across this place, it's going to wait a moment. I know this can take some time. If you don't know Jesus, slip your hand up. If you want to come back to Christ, slip your hand up. If you want to be sure you have God, slip your hand up right now. And we're going to pray for you. In Jesus' name, who is that right now? I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. If that's you, slip your hand up. God's going to touch you. If your heart is racing, if your mind is trying to question whether that is you, it probably is. Just be bold. Just take that step and throw your hand up in the air nice and high so I can see that if that's you. I don't want to leave, finish this service without that happening right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we just lift our hands one more time? Now let the wine of heaven fill you. I've given you the water. Now let the wine, hope, joy, assurance. I can see that wine washing out depression, fear and anxiety. Suddenly you're like, my goodness, God is for me. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. My cup is overflowing. My cup, my life is running over. Say it one more time after me. My cup runs over. Come on, give the Lord one more huge hand. Right? Thanks, Pastor Mark. Can we give Pastor Mark a huge hand as well? You know, it's not just on Sundays that we get our cup filled as well. It's at the Tuesday prayer meeting. Come to the Tuesday prayer meeting at 7 o'clock, church. It's not just at the prayer meeting. It's then gathering together at Connect Groups during the week that we fill each other's cup and we get our cup filled. Keep gathering as believers. If you're not in a Connect Group, go out to the information desk. Get hooked up. Let's make small communities in, in our big community here. Church, we've got an awesome night tonight. We've got Pastor James Edwards preaching at the 6 p.m. service. So make sure you come back tonight. And can I encourage you, go the bold this week. Who has God put on your heart this week to invite to a service next week? Be bold. 
give what's inside of you to someone else. If they say no, so what? You asked. That's all you need to do. It's just the invitation. So go the bold this week, church. Ask someone to church. Have a great week. Take someone out to lunch and let's worship. Over to you, Ryan. Church, have an amazing week. Take someone out for lunch. See you soon.